watching FinTech Wave. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ken from FinTech Wave. I hope you're well. I'm back with another video. But before we get started, I'd just like to remind you, if you haven't already, please click like and subscribe and also smash that notification bell. Those things help FinTech Wave go up in the rankings and you'll also be notified when we drop new content on FinTech Wave. And by all means, do comment down below. Your feedback is welcome and appreciated. So today I'm just gonna do a quick market rundown and go over a couple of coins that I follow. And then I'm just gonna jump right into the uh, main topic of discussion. Overall, the total crypto market cap is 2.321 trillion. So we're really starting to climb back up. Bitcoin 56,650, up 1% for the day and 18% for the week. Ethereum was at 3,600, but it's not too far below that. 3,532, so Ethereum's still looking good. And you know, you have to consider that Ethereum is still by and large at the basis of the lion's share of DeFi activity. So consider the fact that after the London hard fork and the EIP 1559, got put in place recently that there is a trend towards scarcity with ethereum so it's going to become harder and harder to get and you may not see the results of these things overnight but just try to think about where ethereum could be one year from now sure there's lots of other platforms coming along or whatever but do you really think ethereum is going to disappear in like six months i don't i don't think ethereum is going anywhere for a while i mean and look how many other platforms are built on ethereum just off the protocol alone you know, so many different things would have to go away. And then if you look at the fact that Ethereum and Bitcoin basically got a free pass, what do those things tell you? So remember, none of what I'm saying is financial advice. It shouldn't be taken that way. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. But I just try to bring you crypto information that you might want to consider and then research further. So Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two top cryptos, and they're probably going to remain the two top cryptos for a while. I don't see them going away as the top cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin will probably always have a spot in the top three. Some people think Ethereum may flip Bitcoin, but that remains to be seen. I think Ethereum could see a 5 to 10x from here. That's what I think. Again, I'm not advising you. And, you know, I'm looking to see what actions I can take to capitalize on that hunch. That's me, though. Anyway, going down the line, I just want to jump over to XRP. Finally, staying above 115. I don't like to spend too much time talking about XRP because I'm at the point where I'm basically over the whole SEC Ripple case, really, I wish it was done already. I feel like they made this company lose the better part of a year with United States development. And um, it kind of makes me just want to say things that I don't really want to get into in terms of this YouTube channel and get off into all that negative philosophical pointing fingers at people and start, you know, I don't want to do all of that. We all know what XRP is. We all know that it's the best thing out there. They have the most amazing international cross-border solution out there. And so do the people that are trying to slow it down. And if you look at the fact that there are people that jumped off the SEC, that jumped out of government positions and moved, look at Rosie Rio. She was the treasurer of the United States. She's now sitting on the board of Ripple. There are ex-SEC people who have left the SEC and gone over to Ripple. You have media people backing up XRP now. You have um, an attorney, John Deaton, basically representing the XRP holders who got hurt by the lawsuit. I mean, what is it going to take? And, and as I sit here and it, everybody can see that the whole thing is a farce to begin with based on the fact that they never gave clarity. And the SEC is suing Ripple saying you should have known when they didn't even know. So just the fact that it's total BS and they can string it out in court for a year puts me someplace where I shouldn't be when I start talking about things on YouTube. Because all I'm going to be doing is saying things that everybody knows anyway. Right. So there's enough people covering XRP. I am pro XRP. I'm part of the XRP community. I'm part of the XRP army. I would like to see a $10,000 XRP. So XRP is on the come up. Some of the people I follow are talking about a $4 or $5 XRP by year's end. Now I've seen that number go to like 20 by year's end. Listen, if the case would have wrapped up, we would already be looking at a $20 XRP by Christmas, but they're going to drag it out. They've been saying the case will end this month for two months already, and they're still managing to drag it out. So at this point, I just hope that the case will be wrapped up before the end of the year. And, you know, part of wrapping these cases up is like when the decision gets made and they say, OK, XRP is a currency or XRP is not a security. Whatever they deem it as remains to be seen. But they say, OK, XRP is not a security. 
then from that day, in terms of things actually becoming where moves can start to be made in the United States and we start to get a rhythm going, that's another 30 days, right? So, you know, no matter how you slice it, you're talking about best case scenario, XRP hits the ground running for 2022. And I hope that basically we see uh, at this point the best case scenario that we are able to see for Ripple and XRP. All right. And I'm going to talk about one of the things that Ripple is doing that XRP is a part of later on in this video as I finish out the main topic. And that main topic is the fact that crypto payments are really on the rise worldwide. Um, uh, I'm not in the United States, so I don't know exactly who I'm American, but I'm not based in the United States. So I don't know exactly if people are running into McDonald's, you know, or Starbucks or places like that and paying at the counter with crypto. I don't know. You know, they should be. You know what I mean? And really, the United States needs to focus on getting our technology and getting our monetary flow humming along. And crypto provides the solution for that. The value of the United States dollar is continuing to decline, mainly because they keep printing more and more money to basically do quantitative easing. And then they talk about, you know, job growth is on the rise. Why is job growth on the rise? Because people have three jobs to make ends meet and they count all three of them. So there's all kinds of ways that the numbers are skewed and they put it in the papers like everything's hunky-dory. It's not. As you can see, just go to the store. Every week the price goes up. Why? Because the value of the United States dollar is sinking. While ironically enough, the value of cryptocurrency, the very thing that they're trying to suppress with every FUD headline that they can, is continuing to rise amidst all the adversity. On Twitter, we see that now payments has a deal with Shiba Inu. Again, getting back to this coin that has this just this really catchy market appeal you know and i'm not even trying to get on and do a, a shiba inu commercial right now i'm just saying look at this thing what youthful person that watches k-pop that watches bts that watches blackpink isn't gonna you know you show them that or you show them like a die stablecoin logo which do you think is going to get more attention when was the last time you heard about die okay shiba inu this shiba inu that and i think that image is everything you know, and let's just tell it like it is. I mean, they have a very catchy marketing thing going on and they have the coding chops to back it up. That's a deadly combination in cryptocurrency. All right. So I'm saying Shiba Inu is nothing to sleep on, but I've said that before. But anyway, not only are crypto payments on the rise, but now you can pay with a coin like Shiba Inu, which is worth talking about for the simple fact that you can still get Shiba Inu at a pretty low price. Here it is right here. You know what I mean? Much higher than you could have gotten it for three weeks ago when I started talking about it, but it's still not too late to get in. Again, not financial advice, but crypto payments on the rise, new companies coming in. Just the fact that a company like Now Payments would get together with Shiba Inu and make it so that you can pay with Shiba Inu says two things, among others. Number one, that people on the development side who typically are very, very intelligent people in this technology see that crypto payments are going to be one of the next big things. And secondly, they see that a lot of people are going to want to pay with this particular token. You know, do the math. Here's a company that's like saying, hey, everybody, you can pay with Shiba now. They're not thinking about tomorrow. They're thinking about two years from now. And you should be thinking about two years from now, too. And if you look at that price and you think two years from now, you have to ask yourself, what do you think the outcome of that set of factors is going to be? And from there, you research and decide what your final move is going to be. Again, not financial advice. So now payments in Shiba Inu, that's one off the top of my head. Then secondly, and this is old news. This is from March of this year. Visa transaction settlement with USDC. So if Visa is linked to debit cards a lot of times. Coinbase, for example, offers a debit card. So if you have USDC in your Coinbase account, you got 100 bucks worth of USDC in your Coinbase account for like little everyday things like a Starbucks latte or something like that. You can get it with USDC, but here's the deal. And this is a jewel right here. I want to let people know is, you know, when this COVID thing goes away and people start traveling again, paying with crypto linked to your debit card is beautiful for this reason. If you're going to be using this bank linked debit card every time that's linked to your home bank in a foreign country where you might be on a long-term business trip, or something like that, where you got to go stay in France for six months to study. Perfect example, studying abroad, right? And they have a checking account that their parents may have set up for them. And they have a Visa debit card and they're paying for things with their home-based Visa card. And it's working fine, but there's these additional fees. And what those fees are is your bank, not Visa. It's your bank charging you to convert the United States dollar into that local currency. And this is a jewel right here. 
And I'm going to end the video after this because the video is getting really long and I kind of wanted to get this jewel in. The beautiful thing I've noticed is, yeah, okay, you pay with a Visa debit card. They're going to add on, with Coinbase, they charge you an additional 2.49%. So if something costs you $100, you have to pay $2.49 on top of it. Okay. But if that were your bank, if Visa bills in that charge, that's one thing. But then you got to also pay the currency conversion. And here's where they get you. Whereas it might be like $1 to $2 or another currency, if the United States dollar is stronger than that currency, let's say, what the bank is going to give you when they do the conversion, they're not going to give you the $2. They're going to give you $1.70. You feel what I'm saying? And if you add that little 30 cents that they build in on top of any other fees, they get you on the currency conversion. Anybody who's ever traveled and flipped currency knows what I'm talking about. Because if you go in the airport, you really get fleeced. Because if it's like a $1 to $2 conversion, naturally they're going to take some. But instead of taking like 15 cents at places like the airport where it's super convenient for you, so they capitalize on the fact that, you know, you don't really have to go any further than the airport kiosk, they charge you for that convenience. Where the going rate might be to take 30 cents from you, they'll take 45 cents from you in the airport. Dig what I'm saying. They're also getting money to convert from the United States to the local currency that the vendor wants to be paid in, right? If you're in Pakistan, the vendor wants to be paid in Pakistan currency, okay? And if you're using your home-based bank, not only do you pay for whatever it is you're paying for, you know, you buy that rug, right? But then they also charge you to convert to Pakistan money. That's what these banks do. But the beautiful thing about crypto is you don't get that conversion charge because they're not going from one currency to another. They're going from crypto to the next currency. And I've been watching this thing. You know what I mean? Because there's all these different ways these banks get paid off you as you in the global space that we live in now, right? They don't just get you on, you know, sending money abroad. Try to use your visa abroad and then look closely at your bank statement or your credit card statement and check, you know, especially with your bank. And when it comes to basically your bank is based to your United States currency or your home currency, Canada, whatever it is. And then you go to, you know, Japan and you buy that dinner or whatever it is. And then you look at your bank statement. And in addition to the charge for dinner, there's also this other fee, conversion fee. And if you're someplace long term, let me tell you something. At the end of a month, it could be two, three hundred dollars in conversion fees. Right. So the beautiful thing about crypto being linked or crypto being used as a payment device. But in this case, I'm talking about crypto being utilized by Visa to settle transactions. MasterCard is another one. They're doing it, too. The way I know this is because the XRP card that's linked to Global ID, which is another way crypto payments are getting settled. They use MasterCard and, you know, you can use, it's a MasterCard, you can use MasterCard anywhere in the world. If I can use MasterCard anywhere in the world, I can use my XRP card anywhere in the world. And it's a prepaid debit because you're paying with money. Like, in other words, to use the XRP card, you have to have money in your XRP wallet. And then you tell the card, that's the beautiful thing about these cards. You could have 10 different types of cryptos and you could tell the card. Okay, link it to this. You go on your app, on your phone, link it, move it over. I don't want to use XRP anymore. I'll use Ethereum now. Real quick, I want to talk about XPOP. There's this other way crypto is getting uh, used at the point of purchase. I believe that stands for XRP at the point of purchase. Anyway, this whole platform allows you to basically use XRP to pay and you don't have to have an internet connection at that moment. I believe it structures a repay or an IOU of some kind on the back end that you know basically earmarks whatever amount of XRP it is in your wallet for that transaction. So pretty cool. And one more way that XRP is innovating and helping crypto to become something that gets utilized en masse in the global marketplace. So bravo for Ripple once more. Shout to the XRP community again. I spent some time talking about XRP earlier. Here's yet another way Ripple's team of developers is innovating in the crypto space and looking to make crypto something for all of us to use and benefit from so we don't get hit with things like currency conversions. I mean, how many different ways are these people going to get paid from us? Peace. This is Ken from FinTech Wave signing off. I'll catch you guys on the next vid. This is Ken from Fintech Wave. Thanks for checking out this latest episode. If you like the content, please hit like and subscribe. Shout out to all the people who've subscribed already. I'm going to try to keep the quality content coming on Fintech. I appreciate you. And there's a link in the description. The Fintech Wave theme is now an NFT. See you next time, everybody. Take care.